Hi, Emmanuelites. Welcome to another Inspire Devotional. You're probably wondering by now why I keep calling you Emmanuelites in all of my devotionals, but I just feel like in the Bible and Old Testament, there were Israelites, Hittites, Perizzites, and all the other ites. And um, I just feel like we are a tribe um, in Emmanuel, and we're staying connected uh, through this form of social media, which is awesome. So the question that I want to bring to you today is, do we as believers and Christians and followers of Jesus have the right to feel angry um, and to actually display anger towards people in this country, whether it be leaders or other people? So what I've noticed is as I've been looking through social media, I see a growing sentiment of anger, sometimes bitterness, sometimes outrage. And it's so easy for us to actually um, get involved with all that. Um, some are angry at the government for decisions being made with very little consultation with the public. It also seems like um, certain decisions being made by our leadership are in contrast to what the majority of the people want. And I can see that it's causing a lot of friction and anger. Some people are angry at those that are wearing masks. Some people are angry at those that are angry. And so the list goes on. And so where does this all end? So the question remains for us as believers, do we allow ourselves to jump on the bandwagon of angry sentiment? So I just want to take us back to the scripture because for me, if you've ever heard me speak before, you'll know that I don't often uh, ever share from my opinion, but I, I bring it back to scripture. So if we go back to the Holy Scripture, um, one of the responses I think that should underpin uh, the way our, heart, our hearts are positioned is this. So in James 1 verse 19 and 20, it says the following, and I'm just going to read that. It says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. And I can see sometimes by certain posts that, and um, referring to people that are even Christians, that is often not the case. It also goes on to say that human anger, or in other translation, a man's anger, does not produce the righteousness, and in another translation says, all the justice God desires. So we can see that, you know, um, the scripture is challenging us in the way we position our hearts and the way we think on anger. I know that some believers or Christians that I've spoken to sometimes misunderstand certain scripture and they say, yeah, but John, you know, um, Jesus himself displayed anger in the New Testament where he actually went into the temple, a place of worship, and he uh, made a whip and he got really riled up and overturned tables of those that were selling uh, sacrificial animals and doing money changes and um you know, people might say, but look at Jesus' life. He got angry. So don't we have a right to get angry? But what I will say this is, once again, we need to look at the full counsel of the gospel. And we need to interpret things properly. So in that um, particular scenario, Jesus, number one, was fulfilling prophecy about what he would do. And then number two, it was a righteous anger. So it wasn't a human anger. It was an anger um, uh, from from God, because we all know that Jesus uh, is was also God in the flesh, and that He was only doing doing that which was the will of the Father. So we need to make sure that we don't misinterpret Scripture. I've also sometimes people go into the Old Testament where the people are under the Old Covenant, and they say, "Yeah, but look at all these scriptures in the Old Covenant where um, it often states and God's anger burned against His people." or God's wrath was carried out against his people or opposing nations. And, you know, so that was obviously back then, and we need to be careful to uh, not misinterpret Scripture. And so we need to look at things through the, through the lens of the Holy Spirit and Jesus. So I want to go on to say as well that on the subject of um, anger and God's righteous um, outworking of that vengeance is the Lord's and so even in um, you know we, we've got to position our hearts and we've got to realize that there's scripture that says 
God is our vindicator and that we need to hand things over to him. And also, even when Jesus was betrayed by Judas, one of his disciples took out a sword and cut off the ear of one of the men that came to um, take Jesus away and arrest him. And Jesus actually told him to put it on his sword and heal that man's ear. So we see how that anger doesn't produce good things and it's not really what Jesus wants. Also in the scripture of Matthew 5 verse 21 to 22, Jesus says the following, You have heard that our ancestors were told you must not murder. But I say if you are angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot or you fool, you are in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, I have called people idiots before, but uh, I have repented of that personally because it's not right if we line ourselves in scripture. Um, so friends, we can see that the anger left unchecked within us can actually produce bitterness. It can actually go on to produce ang- um, rage. It can go on to produce um, contempt for others as well and sometimes even harm. So it's what you do with that anger that really counts. I also want to say this, that do we realize that what's in the heart, the mouth will confess. And that's really important. Also, we need to realize that there is life and death in the power of the tongue. And if you've uh, ever had someone actually say something that really cuts you, you will know that it really does. So... I want to leave you with these questions and in closing, I want to ask you the following. What are you choosing to confess with your mouth during this time? What do you do with your emotions of anger when they arise? Do you speak life or death? Do you exercise self-control as is spoken about in Galatians 5 as one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Do you pray? Do you seek the Prince of Peace to help you get rid of that anger? 